exercise 513 will bring us through learning objective 4, learning objective 5, and learning objective 7. Let's see what we have here. Applying overhead, journal entries, disposition of underapplied or overapplied overhead. The following information is taken from the accounts of Foster Corporation. The entries in the T accounts are summaries of the transactions that affected those accounts during the year. We have four T accounts. Manufacturing overhead, work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. The overhead applied to production during the year is distributed among the ending balances in the accounts as follows. And we're just going to skip over that for now. We're going to get back to that, but let's just ignore that information for now. And let's go to, to what's required. Required, number one, identify the reasons for entries A through D. And in the T accounts, they're all labeled A, B, C, D. So we know what they are. So let's start with the very first one, number one, A. So A, we see manufacturing overhead is a debit amount of $380,000. But we in the other three accounts, we have no offsetting A. Well, how does something enter manufacturing overhead? Utilities, depreciation, all of these things enter in. So what we have for manufacturing overhead since it's a debit amount, manufacturing overhead increased by $380,000. And that's a debit amount. And something else decreased, and we'll call that a cash account, probably decreased for $380,000. There's our credit amount. We have to use a balance sheet account, correct? So there's A. There's a journal entry for A. Let's look at B. And B says we have a $410,000 credit entry in manufacturing overhead. Offset by a 410,000 debit entry in work in process. So what's happening here is that work in process is going up by $410,000 and manufacturing overhead is dropping by $410,000. So what is this? This is, this is just applied overhead, right? Manufacturing overhead is leaving since it's a credit. That's the application of it entering work in process. Manufacturing overhead enters work in process through applied overhead. So that's nothing more than applied overhead. So there is B. Let's move on to C. C, let's look at for the entries associated with C. C has a credit entry in work in process. So 760,000 is leaving. And if we go over to finished goods, we see that 760,000 is entering. So the journal entry looks like this. Finished goods goes up by 760,000. Work in process drops by 760,000. Well, what does that look like? Well, that's cost of goods manufactured, right? Cost of goods manufactured. It's nothing more than work in process transferred, transferred to finished goods inventory. And you'll remember that when something leaves work in process, it goes into the finished goods inventory. This amount here is called the cost of goods manufactured. So our cost of goods manufactured is $760,000. Finally, our last one, D. What do we have for D? We see $820,000 leaving our finished goods inventory and $820,000 being debited to cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold increases by $820,000 and our finished goods inventory decreases by $820,000. So we have to explain that. What is that? Well, that's just the sale of goods, right? It's recording the sale of goods. It's not recording the sale so much. It's recording the cost of that sale. So this is just the sale of finished goods and that's what we're moving out. There you go. We've identified the reasons through, for A through D. Number two. The company allocates any balance in the manufacturing overhead account to the other accounts in proportion to the overhead applied during the year that is in the ending balances in each account. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. And even in the, the, the video lecture, it's hard to explain it in words until we actually just do one. So here we are. Follow along very carefully. Number two. It's saying that it allocates any balance in manufacturing overhead. So the first thing we got to do is figure out what's left in manufacturing overhead. We're told we have a balance, a credit balance, 
manufacturing overhead has a credit balance of 30,000. What does that mean, a credit balance? That's what we have to figure out first. Well, if we look at manufacturing overhead, we see that we actually incurred 380,000, but that we applied 410. So we applied too much. So that $30,000 credit balance is over applied. And when it's over applied, the proper way to close it out is in proportion to where this 30,000 is sitting among the inventory accounts. So it is telling us here in the question, it's closed out in proportion to the overhead applied during the year that is in the ending balance in each account. And I said, let's skip over some information. Now we're going to review that information. The overhead applied to production during the year is distributed among the ending balance in the accounts as follows. So here's what we have. We're told that work in process. Now, we're not told that work in process contains $32,800. We're told that work in process has 32800 of the applied overhead still sitting there has 32,800. Finished goods has 41,000 and cost of goods sold has 336,200. Now these are just numbers we're given. And that's a total of $410,000. Now, here's the important thing. This total here, this 410 must be equal to the manufacturing overhead that was applied during the year. And it is. So we know we applied $410,000. Of that $410,000, $32,000 is still sitting in work in process, forty-one dollars is still sitting in finished goods that haven't been sold, and three dollars of that four ten dollars has been recognized as cost of goods sold. This is from the accounting system we have. You may say, how do we track that? Well, your computerized accounting system will be able to track that. Now. So what do we do with the 30,000? Here's what we do. This 410,000 represents 100% of the manufacturing overhead that was applied. This 32,8 represents 8% of the total. This 41,000 represents 10% of the total. And this represents 82% of the total. So what we're saying is of the 410 that was applied 8% is still sitting in work in process, 10% is still sitting in finished goods, and 82% is still sitting in cost of goods sold. In other words, these numbers are overstated collectively by 30,000. Of this 30,000, 8% of it belongs to work in process. In other words, this 8% of 30,000, that's what that's over applied by. So here's what we do. We have to get the 30,000 credit balance out. It's a credit balance, so what we need is we need a debit balance of $30,000. we are going to reduce work in process by 8% of that total. We're going to reduce it by 8% of thirty k. So we're going to reduce that by $2,400. we are going to reduce our finished goods inventory by 10% of thirty k, which is 3000 and we're going to reduce our cost of goods sold by 82% of the 30,000, which comes to 24,600. These three numbers should add up to 30,000. And if you add them up, you see that they do add up. So this is how we close it out. So it's, a, it's kind of a long process. First of all, once we know that it's over applied, we need the ending balances in work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. Not the ending balances that are in work in process, but of the ending balance in work in process, what dollar amount represents manufacturing overhead. Now, what we apply during the year, this 410, we've got to figure out where it's sitting. Most of the time, you'll find the majority of it is sitting in cost of goods sold. The majority. So it's 82%. So if we had closed this all out to cost of goods sold, it would be off by 5400 It wouldn't be a big deal. But this is the proper way to do it. Exercise 514. 
Learning Objective 3, Learning Objective 5. Let's see what we have here. We have departmental overhead rates. Grange Company has two departments, stamping and assembly. The company uses job order costing and computes a predetermined overhead rate in each department. Stamping department bases its rate on machine hours. The assembly department bases its rate on direct labor cost. At the beginning of the year, the company made the following estimates. So we have our estimates for direct labor hours, machine hours, manufacturing overhead, and direct labor cost in both stamping and assembly. A lot of information. Some of it we don't need. The idea, the trick to the question is figuring out, well, what is the useless information, right? Required, number one, compute the predetermined overhead rate to be used in each department. Well, okay. Let's start by being clear what we have. We have stamping and we have assembly. And since we're calculating a predetermined overhead rate, what do we need? We need estimates. Only estimates. We don't care about real numbers right now. We will, but for now, let's just care about estimates. Both cases, you need estimates of manufacturing overhead. In both cases. For the stamping, we're told that it bases it on machine hours and for manufacturing and for uh, assembly we're told that it's based on direct labor dollars so reading off uh, uh, the information that's given to us we're told that our estimate for manufacturing overhead is two million eight hundred and fifty thousand and that our machine hours are three hundred thousand that will give us eight dollars and fifty cents per machine hour here we're told that our, in the assembly department, we're told that our total overhead or estimating overhead costs there will be four million and that our direct labor costs will be 3.2 million. <clears throat> that gives us dollar twenty-five or one two five, a dollar twenty-five for every one dollar in labor. Now you may be saying, but I thought the dollar signs canceled out. They did. So it could also equal or 1.25 times our total direct labor costs, or it also means 125% of total direct labor costs. <clears throat> so you can interpret any way you want. The point is that it's $1.25 in overhead for every dollar in labor. That's the translation of what we've done there. Number two what's required here. Assume that the overhead rates that you computed in one above are in effect. All right, the job cost sheet for job 407, which was started and completed during the year, shows the following. And if we look over, we see job cost, we see the job over here. Compute the total overhead cost applied to job 407. The total overhead cost to job 407. That's what we have to compute. So let's, uh, let's have a look at what we have. We have two departments. We have to figure out how much was charged in stamping and how much was it charged in assembly. And this is for job 407. And let's uh, direct labor. We have direct labor hours. We have machine hours. We're just going to recopy what, uh, what's given to us for the most part, direct materials and direct labor dollars. So what I'm copying down now is what's given to us. We're not going we're not calculating anything yet. We're just going to figure out if we if we actually need anything. 450 and 20 direct materials here was $400 and when it got here it incurred another 1850. It incurred $250 of direct labor costs here and when it got here it incurred another $800. So what we're being asked to do is figure out what this last line is. Manufacturing overhead, how much was charged? Well, the stamping department basis has a predetermined overhead rate of $8.50 per machine hour. So we look down, we find machine hours, we find we used 450 machine hours. So the stamping, the manufacturing overhead from the stamping department is the 450 times the 850. We get 38 25. Now, in case you're thinking, well, I'm done, read the question. It says, what is the total overhead cost applied to this job? 
This job goes through stamping, then it goes through assembly. This is just the amount applied for the stamping. Once it leaves stamping, this job travels over to assembly and incurs a lot of this activity along with some overhead. And it's $1.25 for every dollar in labor. Or we multiply total labor dollars by 1.25. So we go down till we find our direct labor dollars. We see that it's 800. We multiply 800 by 1.25. We will get $1,000 in manufacturing overhead. So adding these two numbers together gives us 4,825. There's the answer. That's the total overhead cost applied to job 407 is 4825. Again, how we did this here. How we calculated this is we took our actual machine hours multiplied by our predetermined overhead rate. And this is our actual machine hours. What we did here is we took our actual direct labor dollars and we multiplied it by our predetermined overhead rate, which is 1.25. So we used this number here. Different rates for different departments each job goes through each department. So you can think of this as an assembly line where job 407 has to go to stamping first, gets a bunch of stuff done, then travels over to assembly, then gets a bunch of stuff done, and then finally leaves. So you have to think about it that way. Finally, number three, would you expect substantially different amounts of overhead costs to be charged to some jobs if the company used a plant-wide overhead rate? based on direct labor cost instead of using departmental rates. Explain, no computations are necessary. So in other words, no math here, just words. Would you expect different costs to be charged to different jobs? My answer is yes, yes I would. Why? Because direct labor dollars, if we put it all on direct labor dollars, is not an appropriate cost driver. appropriate cost driver for stamping. How can I say that? Well, have a look at stamping. Here's assembly, here's stamping. <clears throat> look what happens in stamping. We're going to incur hours, direct labor hours, only 25, but 450 machine hours. But when we go over to assembly, we're going to incur 100 direct labor hours, and only 20 machine hours. So when we look at our total direct labor cost in stamping, it's only 250 bucks. And it's $800 here, so it's significantly higher here, but look at the difference in cost. Our manufacturing overhead here is 38 is 3800 and only 1000 here. So because stamping direct labor dollars is not an appropriate driver of the costs in stamping, then it wouldn't matter. Think about it this way. If you use direct labor dollars to allocate manufacturing overhead in a completely automated firm, you would have no manufacturing overhead. Why? Because you'd have no labor. So direct labor dollars is not an appropriate driver when you're in a department that is more automated than anything else. Now, if you've ever seen a stamping facility, all it is is machines. There's, there's a roll of steel at one end that comes through a machine and a stamp comes down and bang, bangs out a stamping, a, a little metal form or whatever it is, and the machine just rolls on its own. And the roller rolls that thing to the end of the line and it drops into a bin. It's completely automated. There is no labor, so it's not a direct, it's not an appropriate cost driver for a plant-wide predetermined overhead rate.